Hey gang, um, I'm gonna walk you through how to quickly, for the most part, create a histogram. Um, it's not real difficult, but you do need to establish what your class widths are gonna be so that you can get your upper limit values. If you don't have your upper limit values, Excel will create a histogram and it will do kind of just whatever it wants and it can get kind of ugly. It might not have the number of bars or classes that you want. Uh, so I want you to follow my tutorial on this. Follow very closely and honestly you can't you can't screw it up if you do. All right. Um, first of all, I'm using a set of data from the class today which was the, the data on the ages of, of the football players. So you guys can go ahead and use that as your model. Okay, so we have our ages in column A. I'm also going to enter, okay, this is going to be kind of weird, but what I'm going to do is, I'm just, and you can choose any column, but I'm going to choose column C. And what I'm going to do is, from our, uh, from our frequency table, I'm going to take the upper limit values and I'm going to type those in here. So, for instance, my first upper limit for my first class was 24. And then we said the next one was 27. Or was that right? Yeah, 24, 27. Um, the next age, or I'm sorry, the first age was 23, not 24. 23, then 26, 29, 32. And so what I did here is I put the first four class upper limits in okay these are what we call our bin values this is what what excel considers to be the bin values and that's the upper limit values for each of the classes now the only one i'm not going to put in i'm not going to put in the last class upper limit because what excel is going to do is it's going to create an extra bin for you anyway so i'm only going to if i have five classes i'm only going to enter four if I had six classes, I would only enter five of the bin values or the upper limit values. If I had 10, I would only enter nine, okay? We're going to let Excel create that last class for us, and then we'll adjust it kind of after the fact, okay? So from here, we needed that data analysis tab um, so that we can click on it. And in your list, you'll have to find it's. I think it's in alphabetic order, but if you look for histograms, you can double click it and then it's not yours won't be populated mine's populated because I've done this once already but if if you're gonna put in your input range your input range are the values that you want to put into the histogram so I'm gonna go ahead and select those just click and drag and select them and then the bin range the bin range are the four values that we put in column C so I'm gonna select those so again, we're telling Excel, hey, here's we, we want you to put in the table or put in the histogram. And the bin range is saying, hey, here's the upper limits that we want you to use. All right. The only other thing we need to make sure we click and make sure is checked is this chart output. Nothing else needs to be checked unless you want to. If you want to put your histogram on the same page as your data, you can do that. I don't. I typically just like create a new sheet and you're going to click OK. I don't know what the alert is for, but it gives us an alert. And just kind of click past it. Now, it creates our histogram, which right now looks like a bar graph. All right. Now, we're going to do some adjusting on this. All right. And this is, I'm going to go ahead and enlarge this just so I can see kind of more what's going on. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a title. Okay. I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to call this uh, Weight distribution of Ravens offense 2018. You could just call it weight distribution if you wanted to, but I like to make it a little bit more specific. So I give it a title. I'm also going to come over here to where this little frequency key or legend is, and I'm going to delete that. Just gives you a little bit more space with your, with your histogram. Notice that the four bin values in our table here are now here and it created a fifth that says more. We are going to adjust this. All right. We're going to make this look how we want it to look. Now, the one other thing we're going to do before we do anything else is I'm going to come up to quick layout and I'm going to choose the layout that has the bars smushed together like this. 
And right now that doesn't look all that great, but it'll look better. Okay, trust me, it'll look better. Now, from here, I want to make sure my x-axis has my ranges in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change these. We wanted our first class to be 21 to 23. And notice that in our first class it changes from 21 to 23. The next one we wanted was 24 to 26. The next was 27 to 29. The next was 30 to 32. And the last one, we're going to delete that word more, and we're going to type in 33 to 35. And notice that what that's done is it's changed all the labels at the bottom, which is really what we want anyway. On the left, I typically leave this as frequency, or if you want to be more specific, you know, if I ask you what, what are we talking about here, you can enter in number of players. Okay, you can kind of click that, you can double click that, you can adjust that. So if we want to change it from frequency to number of players, let me see if I can just get this number of players, or you can change the number of offensive players, or you can leave, again, you can leave a frequency. But down here, this title at the bottom on the x-axis where it says bin, I'm going to change that to ages or age, and then in parentheses, I'm going to write years of age. We could put years or years of age. And for the most part, we're done. Now, you can get you can get cute and fancy with this. I like to come in. I like to kind of mess around with the colors a little bit. Um, the, really, the world is kind of your oyster at this point. Um, there's a way to, let me see if I go to format, we can put, we can change the borders, I just can't remember exactly how to do that, I don't know if black did it, nah, it put one in, but if we select all of them, make sure all the, you can kind of see what's selected by all the little points, they give you the vertices. You can give them black, you know, backgrounds. You can make them thicker, so you can give them more weight, so you can kind of distinctly see the lines better. And for something like that, well, and I'm a Ravens fan, so you know, I want the, I want the, I want it to be purple, not orange, but purple. So I mean, you can kind of do it. You can change the background. You can do whatever you want. At, at that point, it doesn't really matter. But the most important thing is that the message of the data is conveyed. And that we can start to have a conversation as to, you know, what do we see about the ages? You know, there seems to be a huge group of players here between the ages of, you know, 21 and 26 years old. And then there's a huge drop off on offense in terms of ages of players beyond that. So those are the types of conversations we want to be able to have about histograms. Um, again, the focus of this class isn't so much on can I create a histogram, but part of the, the, the power that we have in our hands with Excel and other software is, well, let's go ahead and create them, and now let's analyze them and see if we get out of it. So, again, just a really quick tutorial. Um, I know this will run towards nine minutes, so I'm going to cut it off. Um, but what I would like you guys to do for tonight is go ahead and recreate this one. You can change colors. You can play around with it as you want to. Um, and then your assignment is going to be from your the front page with the weights of the players. I would like you to create a histogram, and you can put it on the same file. Just put it on sheet number four, create a new sheet, put on sheet four. I'd like you to enter the weights of the players and I would like you to create a histogram using those upper limit values, so those bin values, um, and show me that tomorrow that you can do that. If you have questions, please put, put comments in the Google Classroom uh, announcement where I put this and uh, I'll try to help out as much as I can tonight. All right, have a great night, guys. Thanks.